Anyone that's read my channel description will probably realise that I repair and restore a lot of uh, old vintage computer equipment. I also produce replica reproduction boards for old computer equipment, but I also produce boards for old test equipment. Now anyone that's been repairing this sort of equipment for any length of time may well have picked up one of these. This is a, a Fluke 9010A. Uh, it's essentially a, um, a piece of test equipment that allows you to test the boards on a single step processor basis. So you can run specific tests, test memory locations, you, you can do quite a bit with it. But one of the issues with it is that the pods that are required to interface it to a, a given processor board are becoming increasingly rare to get hold of and hence very expensive. Now, the pods themselves are quite reliable, but the problem and the usual reason for scrapping a pod is not because of the pod itself, but because of the cable that runs between the pod and the board that is being tested. And that's what this video is about. I'm going to show how to make one of those cables rather than trying to source a, a, a real genuine one, which is extremely difficult to do and normally entails dismantling an existing pod in order to salvage the cable from it. So these are the cables in question. Um, normally what happens is one or more of the pins breaks off at the, uh, the UUT end. Um, anyone that's not familiar with using these, the UUT is the unit under test. Um, so you have these cables, one end plugs into the board that you are testing or, or fault finding with, and the other end plugs into the pod that connects to the 9010A and on that end there's a, a 40 pin um, deal connector like this uh, and normally what happens is as I said the uh, the pins break off the UUT end and because this is potted if you've ever opened one of these it's just full of potting compound means it's uh, pretty much impossible to, um, uh, to repair. Now they're quite interesting the way they've been made and I suspect at the time that these were designed, a fluke went a bit over the top with the, the design. Now, having said that, the chips that were available at the time were far less forgiving of noise uh, interference um, than the current chips are. So this level of uh, engineering is not really needed for the, the modules to work. Essentially what this is, it's two 40 pin twisted pair cables, but it's a 40 way connector. Obviously it's a 40 pin um, chip it's, it's connecting to. And the reason there are twice as many cables as there are connections is because every other cable is a ground cable. So it's effectively it's a twisted pair for every single signal wire. And then wrapped around it is a, um, a ground lead. So when these are made, um, essentially the cable is crimped onto the the, uh, the pod end in such a way that the ground wires are all connected to ground of course and then all the signal cables connect to the appropriate pin on the uh, on the module. And these are not actually as difficult to reproduce as, as you might first think. They, they essentially just join the 40 pins coming from the signals on the pod to the appropriate pins on the UUT header and Fluke being extremely good at what they do obviously took a very sensible approach when they designed these and what they did is they laid out the pins on the connector the cable plugs onto in such a way that all the connections are in a sensible order. It doesn't take much figuring out when you look at the schematics to figure out how to make up the, uh, the connections. So this is the pinout for the 6502. So that's what this particular pod is. I've made quite a few different ones. And incidentally, these pods are the ones that I produce and I can supply board sets for them. So if you want to set a bare board, just let me know. Um, I can also supply the, uh, the protection modules as well. Uh, so they're available on eBay and also on the JM website. So, as I was saying, if you look at the pinout for the 6502 processor, 
and then look at the schematic for the pod what you'll see is there's a, a kind of good correlation between the order of the pins on this connector which is the one that the lead plugs onto and the order of the pins on the processor itself now on the schematic you won't get to see this on the camera but um, on the schematic these pins are all out of order so if you take a particular pin so i'll take uh, ud naught the u is just the unit under test so it's basically d naught is on pin 15 of this connector and the way the connector is numbered is uh, the, the pin numbers alternate, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and ending in 40 of course. So all you need to do is figure out which is pin 1 relative to the unit under test connector. So if we look at UD0, that's on pin 15. So now we need to find pin 15, or count in such a way that pin 15 is D0, which is this pin. So if we start here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So 15 dB naught, if we say pin 40, equates to pin 1 on here. All you don't need to do then is because these pins are in the correct order, or they'll be alternate side to side, is create a cable that just alternates side to side so in other words if you get a ribbon cable and connect pin one to here then the second conductor on the ribbon cable would connect to here the third connector sorry third conductor would connect to here the fourth to here and so on right through all 40 connections and the easiest way to do that although you could make a cable from scratch using some ribbon cable and crimping on an ide connector is just get an old ribbon cable off a pc so this cable is off a pc that i had lying around um, ignore the splits. You, you don't need those. I just put them in because it makes the whole cable a lot more flexible, but you, you, you don't really need those. Um, but essentially the cable will be one of these. It will have one of these IDE connectors on each end. Obviously you, you need a 40-way version of the cable. Uh, cut it to an appropriate length. Don't go too long, otherwise you might start getting problems. I, I've gone up to about half this length again and tested it to 8 megahertz on the Z80 pod and it works fine. And once you've figured out which pin 1 is, so if I plug this onto the, the board, we've got pin 1 here, and that needs to go to pin 40 on the connector. So as you can see, I have the red lead, which is pin 1, connected to pin 40 on the header, and then conductor 2 goes to pin 1. And then you just alternate side to side. So the next conductor will go to here, the next to here, the next to here, the next to here. And they just alternate back and forth. So in other words, you just alternate the conductors from one side of the header to the next, then back, then that. And uh, you just keep going for all 40. And when you're finished, you'll end up with one of these. And it's it will work. It's um, exactly as the originals were wired, except that it doesn't have the alternating twisted pair grounds. But it doesn't need those. You also find that in the schematic and in cables, if you've tested them, there are pins uh, on the on the not volt uh, rail that are connected together. That's not necessary either. You can, of course, do that if you want to. If you want to put links on the back, you can do that. I'll just put on a sacrificial socket just in case I break a pin off the, um, the one I've made. But to be honest, they're so easy to make. It's like half an hour to make one. Uh, I make these um, sort of four or five at a time, and I've always got one knocking around somewhere that I can use uh, if, if one's already in use somewhere else. Um, now the advantage with these, A, it's pretty much free. If you, you've probably got the parts laying around, and half an hour's work, you, you've got one that you can use. And with a single ribbon cable, if you cut it in half, then of course you get two, because this, this, this is the bit that really you want to uh, avoid having to make these aren't difficult to do but it's just uh, one less step if you get a ready-made cable and by the time you've bought the cable and the ide connector it's just as cheap to to buy an old uh, ide cable for a pc and, and just cut it in half the other advantages with these compared to the originals is the originals are, are quite stiff probably partly from age but um, also they're, they're quite thick cables and they, they can be quite annoying trying to to use because you can't easily 
bend them, deflect them. Whereas this is extremely supple, it's very flexible, and um, you can tie a knot in it if you wanted to, it'd still work. So that's essentially how you make the cable. Now, once you've figured out how the cable is connected, you can you can go overboard on making them if you want to. You can still get cables like this. Uh, again, this is off a PC. Uh, it's usually using a server rather than a PC, but um, it's exactly the same as a standard IDE cable in terms of its uh, connections. The only difference here is that the centre portion has been created from twisted pairs. It's quite difficult to see, but each pair of conductors is twisted, so it gives you a far more noise immunity. It's not really necessary, I found, but if that's um, what you want and you want belt and braces approach, then, then you can do that. Uh, and all you do is you cut off these shrouds, cut off one end, um, connect it exactly as we did with this one, and you have what is a very nice, small, very flexible cable. And it's as simple as that, it's, there's nothing difficult in doing them. Uh, the only ones that might appear more difficult if you've looked at some of the other types of pods. Let's get these out of the way. So, for example, the 6809 pod has a, a cable like this, where it's got two of the IDE connectors at the pod end. The other end's exactly the same, it's still a 40 pin um, dual header. But again, if you look at this schematic, firstly, you've got the pin out for the processor, and then you've got the schematic for the, uh, the pod itself. It looks far more complicated, and again, I, I won't. Uh, try and show you this uh, close up because you won't be able to read it. It's, uh, schematics aren't reproduced very well in the manuals. But you can do exactly the same thing. The fact that there are multiple connectors doesn't matter. All you would do is you would take two of your PC ribbon cables and you alternate the ends. So you take pin one from the end of one, pin two from the end of the other one, pin three from the end of the first one, and you just follow it all the way down, alternating sides on the header. If you're not quite sure which pin is which, then you can just refer to them by name. So let's look at the name that's on the uh, the header on the, the pod, and then see which pin that should be on the on the processor. And of course, the processor pins should exactly match the layout that you have on the, the header itself. So as simple as that, you, you can make these as and when you need to, very cheap, and there's absolutely no reason to scrap a, a flute pod just because you've snapped some pins off the header. As I said, they work um, with all the, the pods I've tried them with so far. Um, the Z80AA that I've made uh, runs up well in excess of 7 MHz using this type of cable. I've never had any problems with noise, and they work just as well as the original cables, if not better.